Yeah, where school is. Okay, so, oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. National Park Service, I welcome you to the rededication of the Kalal Gibran Memorial and Meditation Garden. After looking at 13 sites, the National Capitol Memorial Commission approved a site on Massachusetts Avenue, across from the British Embassy and near the home of the Vice President of the United States. The location on Embassy Row symbolized the universal appeal of Gibran's philosophy, while the close proximity to Washington National Cathedral, the Islamic Center, a Jewish temple, and several Orthodox Christian churches reflected the spiritual and ecumenical nature of his writings. Quote, there are today in the Middle East two men, one of the past and one of the future. Which one are you? Come close. Let me be assured by your appearance and your conduct if you are one of those coming into the light or going into the darkness. Come and tell me who you are and what you are. Are you a politician asking what your country can do for you, or a zealous one asking what you can do for your country? If you are the first, then you are a parasite. If you are the second, then you are an oasis in the desert. And it goes on, unquote. And he alone is great who turns the voice of the wind into a song made sweeter by his own loving. Work is love made visible as it's on the entrance mall. I'm sure we've all seen that. And if you cannot work with love, but only with distaste, it's better that you should leave your work and sit at the gate of the temple and take alms of those who work with joy. For if you bake bread with indifference, you bake a bitter bread that feeds but a half a man's hunger. And if you grudge the crushing of grapes, your grudge distills a poison in the wine. And if you sing though as angels and love not the singing, you muffle man's ears, the voices of the day and the voices of the night. Thanks. A rich man said, speak to us of giving. And he answered, you give but little when you give of your possessions. It is when you give of yourself that you truly give. For what are your possessions but things you keep and guard for fear you may need them tomorrow? There are those who give little of the much which they have and they give it for recognition. And their hidden desire makes their gifts unwholesome. And there are those who have little and give it all. These are the believers in life and the bounty of life, and their coffer is never empty. There are those who give with joy, and that joy is their reward. And there are those who give with pain, and that pain is their baptism. And there are those who give and know not pain in giving, nor do they seek joy, nor give with mindfulness of virtue. They give as in yonder valley the myrtle breathes its fragrances into space. Through the hands of such as these God speaks and from behind their eyes 
he smiles upon the earth. All you shall have someday shall be given. Therefore give now that the season of giving can be yours and not your inheritors. As you've heard, almost 20 years ago to the day, the then chairman of, the, of what was then called the Khalil Gibran Centennial Foundation, accompanied by then President of the United States, George Herbert Walker Bush, dedicated this memorial garden as a gift to the people of the United States of America. Now, it is our happy task to rededicate this memorial, this love made visible, and in that same spirit, to represent it as a gift to the people of the United States. That foundation chairman was my late brother Bill, William J. Baruti, Jr. And I am pleased to repeat now the very first words he spoke at that first dedication. Gibran's words, they are literally carved in stone here. Bill said then, and it is true now, that they can serve as a non-sectarian invocation as a prayer, that is, a prayer for love and understanding, a prayer for peace. Gibran writes, I love you, my brother, whoever you are, whether you worship in your church, kneel in your temple, or pray in your mosque. You and I are children of one faith, fingers of the loving hand of one supreme being, a hand extended to all. Ladies and gentlemen, here, great cedars of Lebanon imitate our own families. They sink roots in American soil. And here, 20 years after such a hopeful dedication of this garden, when dreams of peace were giving hope to so many, we can listen once more to Gibran and resolve to avoid the cynicism he warns against in his poem, My Countrymen, where he writes, I have called you in the silence of the night to point out the glory of the moon and the dignity of the stars. But you startled from your slumber and clutched your swords in fear and cried, where is the enemy? Surely in this hopeful, fateful spring, Gibran wishes no such fearful cynicism for us. In these times, it is, not just, it is not for us just to rededicate this memorial, but at least in our own lives also to rekindle those hopes of 20 years ago, and to look not for enemies, but to seek out friends and family and children especially, even strangers, so that awestruck and with a smile, we might shake them all awake and point out to them the glory of the moon and the dignity of the stars and the wonder of the human spirit. Among those notable for their love made visible at this memorial garden was certainly my brother Bill, whose grave is marked as his soul was with the logo, logo of the Gibran Foundation. I'd note that three of his boys are here with us today. And just as certainly our current chairman, Donald Hanna, deserves credit, and Cheryl Amin Fiegel, and Bill Anawadi, and Bob Andrews, and Bob's accomplice, Gordon Cray, the sculptor who created this memorial's perfect image of Gibran, and more recently oversaw its restoration. And just as certainly our next and final speaker, who with his cabinet colleague, Secretary Salazar, found the funds to ensure that the plain language of the law would be carried out and this memorial restored and maintained. <laughs> it understates to say that without him, this restoration would not have taken place and this day would not have come. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce that man to you now, a man whose life has been given to public service, 
and who after 14 years in the United States Congress from the 18th District of Illinois now serves most effectively as the busiest of all possible U.S. Secretaries of Transportation, the Honorable Ray LaHood. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, thank you for all your extraordinary leadership for uh, our homeland, uh, our, our, our lovely country, uh, Lebanon. You, you, you're a great ambassador, and to all the other distinguished guests here, and uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I said last night at the AEI dinner, there is only one person really who deserves the credit for the rededication, uh, and that's Mike Baruti. And, and I mean this very sincerely. I, I know everybody here uh, has had a lot to do with this, but when I was a member of Congress, I would see Mike at uh, the ambassador and Nicole would invite us to uh, the, uh, their home for receptions and uh, I remember the first time I, I met Mike uh, at one of those receptions he said we need to find the money to fix up the Gibran Memorial on Mass Avenue and to be honest with you I, I had no idea that it was here and uh, so I took the time to come and see it and saw how badly it was uh, in disrepair and uh, since the first time I met Mike uh, he said we have to find the money to fix this up in honor and in memory of Gibran. And uh, I've been to Lebanon uh, 15 times in the last 15 years. We try and go once a year. The first time we went, we visited our little village where my grandparents came from, a village called I-2. There's only about 200 people that live there, and I went to the, the little uh, oh, stack of rocks that uh, uh, was the home where my grandparents or great-grandparents or ancestors grew up. Uh, there's not really a house there, but there's a few little rocks still sitting there, and, uh, and uh, it was an extraordinary experience. But then we went on up to the Gibran uh, grave site, and it is a, a, a beautiful site. It's a museum, and uh, I know some of you have been there. I would encourage any of you to go and visit it when you're in Lebanon and, uh, and, and really take advantage of it. And so Mike was so persistent uh, with me, and so as a member of the Appropriations Committee, back in the day when I was on the Appropriations Committee, you could de do earmarks, which is a, a word we can't even use anymore. It's been taken out of the lexicon here in Washington, D.C. It's not even in the dictionary in, anywhere in Washington anymore. But back in the day, we could get a little earmark once in a while, and, uh, and I wasn't that successful doing that. Uh, but after I came into the cabinet, um, Mike sent me an email. He said, now's the time. No more excuses. Uh, this is the time to do it. And I did talk to uh, my friend Ken Salazar, and I'm sorry he can't be here because he deserves a lot of credit too. Uh, one conversation with Secretary Salazar, that's all it took. How much will it cost? You think maybe it's maybe upwards of a million dollars and all he said was we'll find the money he had never been here either and so I'm grateful to my cabinet colleague and I'm grateful to Mike Baruti for knowing how important it was to make sure this memorial is as beautiful as the life of Gibran and as beautiful as his writings that's what this represents it represents the beautiful life of Gibran and his writings that's what it represents. So, Mike, thank you. Let, let's hear it for Mike Rudy for really, just really hanging in there. Now, I have a number of uh, quotes from Gibran, but you've already heard them all. You've, I've got the history of how this happened. You've already heard it all. Thank you all for, for being here to honor Gibran, but really uh, just to honor Lebanon and and honor so many who work so hard to, to make this happen. This is a magnificent uh, facility, a magnific magnificent memorial, uh, and it is pretty striking that it's between the Islamic Center, just down the hill here, uh, and the National Cathedral. Couldn't be in any better place. Thank you all very much. <laughs>